Hello, and welcome back to Let Supreme Ghost T2X, Shadows of the Metal Age. Um, we are going to play Mission 5 today, the redistribution game, which is a pretty short and easy mission, but it's very nice looking. I like the visit to the Smuggler's Cave. Uh, before that, I recently uploaded Mission 4 of Thief 2 Ambush, and um, as some of you probably noticed, and I also put a little information in the video description. I forgot to implement NecroAge for that video. So um, that deviated a little bit from my normal run. And it is my plan to finish that campaign with that mod. Um, so if you want to see Ambush with the NecroAge, then you can check out my my segmented run. So I flip-flopped those two missions this time. But that should not happen in the future. It's just a slight oversight from my side. Uh, now, I have sort of changed my opinion a little bit about mods and uh, texture mods, but also modifications um, that go beyond just textures. So, for that reason, after I'm done with Thief 2 and T2X, I will not use any mods, uh, including texture mods, for any upcoming fan missions. I will... Um, play the mission the way that it was originally released or the way it was intended by the creators. And of course, sometimes there are texture packs that are recommended and uh, suitable for the mission. So in that case, I might do it, but probably I won't, um, unless otherwise specified. Um, there are a few of you that have requested uh, certain mods to be used, and um, although I, I have expressed my fondness for the Necroage, I realize that it doesn't really apply to fan missions other than T2X because it's specifically made for that. At least this version is. Anyway, let's load up the game from the end of Shadowing the Enemy and watch the briefing. Tonight, I stop running. Tonight, my retribution begins. It's been more than a year since Kadar. Since he died. They let me escape, and soon they'll pay for that mistake. I must have patience. I could try to kill as many of them as I could. I might even get two or three before they caught me. But that's not enough. In a month, it would mean nothing. They don't care about each other. I've asked around a little. No one in this tourist trap seems to know anything about the smugglers on their doorstep. I wonder if I can use that. There are two things that thief fears. Being robbed, or getting caught robbing someone else. Hopefully, I can use both fears against the free traders during my stay. I met with an associate of Malak's here in Sunnyport this afternoon and bought everything I need. So tonight, I'm going to try and sneak into their base of operations and steal both their wealth and their secrecy. If what I've learned is true, the smugglers have a hideout somewhere in an underground cave system. I'll sneak into their base through the secret cave entrance I saw earlier and see what I can find. Kitar, forgive me for not doing anything before. Jala, give me courage for what I must do now. Nice. I have said it before, but I'll say it again. I'm really impressed by the cutscenes that they made. Uh, really in, in the vein of the original missions. Um, but also uh, giving its own spin on it. So that's really impressive. So, we have to uh, do the following. From what little you've seen of the Free Traders, they appear to be tough and organized. You're not going to be able to take them all on by yourself. So you need to try to find out if they have any enemies that can be used against them. 
Every criminal organization has a mastermind. Find out who runs the Sunnyport Free Traders. You can't imagine one man could run such a large group of rogues by himself? Find out who is second in command. You have no idea how big the hideout is or how the Free Traders smuggle goods in and out? Steal a map of the place. Stealing from the Free Traders will pr probably cause suspicion and confusion amongst the members. Make off with at least 750 in loot. Your plans for revenge are going to be ruined if the smugglers have a chance to find out about you before you find out about them. Don't knock out or kill any of them, and no matter what happens, don't let them see you. Once you've learned everything you can, get back out of the, back out of the caves and to the safety of the sunny port. So you don't have to actually leave the caves, you have to just go back to the starting cave. So this is a forced ghosting mission. You cannot get spotted to um, alarm is really what it means. Uh, if they just think they saw you and are hunting, I don't think you you fail the objective at that point. But if they see you and come running, then you fail it. So we essentially have to figure out some... In a lot of this is information. We have to find out who's number one and number two. We have to find out if they have any um, enemies. So that's all... Um, that's all found either by overhearing conversations or by reading uh, texts. And then loot, of course, and getting back. So there's nothing else. There's not, no object that we have to get here um, to speak of. This mission can be perfect Supreme Ghosted. Um, and in this case, it means that it's easy. Uh, the mission is just made in an easy way. There are a few, like one or two different areas on the first floor of the, of the hideout that can be a little bit tough. But overall, this should be a pretty straightforward one. I'm not going to try to be overconfident, though, because sometimes you can get spotted without me noticing. So I'm going to try to do what I can to be careful. Now, um, in the last mission, I noticed um, that I had a very long loading time. Uh, and I've gotten a few suggestions on how to fix that. Marble Man gave me a suggestion. That didn't work on my end. I still have very, very long load times. So um, I will try to, if I can, edit out some of the load times to make sure that it's a little bit smoother. But um, if you guys have any suggestions on how to fix that, and it's only for this fan mission, it's not for, for uh, it's not for missions in general, then let me know, please. Okay. So we're not going to buy anything, um, but do notice that we start without any rope arrows. Um, there are two for purchase, but of course we can't buy anything for Supreme. Um, and we don't need to use anything. There is one rope arrow only available in the whole mission. And that can we can actually find at the very, very end, uh, at least following the route that we're going to take. Um, but we're not going to need any rope arrows. We do not need any in this mission. Uh, but that's quite rare to see uh, no rope or vine arrows available. Um, yes, for purchase, true. But um, only one in mission without starting with any is pretty rare. Give it a save. And quick save. So we don't have any maps, um, so that's, uh, oh yeah, so I did said that there was no objects. Uh, there is a map, of course, but that's a readable in my opinion, so it's only readable to send conversation that we have to overhear. So there's no map to show you, uh, but we will get that. Now in the beginning there are two caves here. So that will take us to the main entrance, and this will take us to a side entrance. We're going to head this way first. Here is a waterfall, and there's a smuggler. Um, actually, I'm going to listen to a conversation first, because that conversation we're not going to be able to hear afterwards. This guy's going to turn around and go soon. So when you sort of enter the opening of this cave, 
those two thieves or, or smugglers so, are going to meet. Have you been on this smugglers hideout tour yet? Oh, sure. I did that when I first joined the free traders. I can't believe how gullible these people are. They actually pass out little paper smuggler hats at the end for the kiddies. It's like they have no idea we're here. Yeah, and it better stay that way. You just be careful how much you mix with the locals. We don't want any trouble, and I'm willing to bet they don't either. It looks like a ghost town to me. Who would I mingle with? Those blasted hammers. Last time, it took us years to get set up again in these caves. Just be careful. We don't want anybody getting suspicious. Okay. So, we learned that the Hammerites are the enemies of the Free Traders. So then we get a new objective. It sounds like the Sunnyport Hammers would love to find out. They failed to run out the smugglers. See if you can find anything more on these Hammerites and where they might be located. So, when... We've listened to this objective. Both of those um, patrollers go back to their spot. So there's one in each of these side caves. The other smuggler went back to the dock section, which is the other second entry into the hideout, which you can see the main entrance of right here. Now, this main entrance is pickable. Um, there are uh, a pickable lock, I think, on either side, so you can pick it from the inside too. Uh, but it's not necessary to enter that way. We can go in through the dock entrance, which does not require a, uh, a lockpick. So I'm going to skip this main entrance. I think that's pretty intrusive to leave the front doors open. It's pretty obvious that somebody broke in. Um, but this conversation is useful in that regard. Because if you enter uh, through this cave and the back way into the docks, this smuggler actually walks into the other cave and they end up having this conversation in the dock area. So if we're going to enter through the docks, of course, we don't want that. So what we're going to need to do in order for them not to be stationed talking in the docks so what if it's pink? is we're going to have to trigger this conversation here and then run around and enter the dock area and then go through the dock cave to enter the hideout. So you, you can actually manipulate where this conversation takes place. Not just when, but where, too. I haven't seen that type of conversation before. So that's interesting. So that's why I'm not going to trigger that conversation now. I'm instead going to uh, go into the other side cave and get a piece of loot there and then go back and uh, trigger that conversation a little bit later. So we're going to end up needing to wait for, for a patrolling smuggler over here. There's one piece of loot in a chest uh, behind this little shed you see on the left. Seems to me like the waterfall pattern. It's kind of weird. I think I saw something. That's not going to work. Let's try this instead. There's a pile of coins worth 75. I'm going to wait for this smuggler to come back here. It's very difficult to hear alerts because of this waterfall. Now up here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 
is a healing oil. Right here. And that's the only way I found to get up there. Without a rope arrow. On this side is a water arrow. <gasps> so now we have to make the move of going back and triggering that conversation. And then heading over to this cave, which is the entrance to the dock area. And then enter the hideout that way. You can do it with that patrolling smuggler being in there but that's not something I want to do. There we go. Crystal shards here. <laughs> Silver nugget here. So now their conversation is done, and now we've gotten around most of this area. It's quite difficult to, well, it's just slow and tedious, to maneuver through all these ledges and uh, rocky outcroppings, get the piece of loot without getting a first alert from this guy. But now we got two crystal shards worth 65, and a silver nugget worth 50, total 190. There we go. Gotta stay awake. So here's one of the entrances to the second floor. We're gonna actually head in here first. Just a little side tower. And in here we need something, namely the flat tooth lockpick. There are three lockpicks we're gonna need, one we have already, the hairpin. There's a flat tooth and a square tooth lockpick that we need to enter one bedroom. Okay. There's a little hallway up up top, second floor. In here you have two candlesticks worth 70, so that's total 260. And we have a journal. Finally got a chance to take that little foreign ship out yesterday. It handles like a charm, but the holes are too small to use for any of the big hulls. I guess it's handy for some of the smaller spice runs, and I'm sure Federock, uh, Faradoc gets a kick out of it, what with it being exotic and all. Didn't we nab that thing back when all this mess with limes was going on? 
Funny I haven't used it yet. Actually, come to think of it, I haven't been on any of the small spice runs in quite a while. The boss has been sending me out on the bigger jobs, but the money is a lot better on the spice runs. Hey, I wonder if he's trying to cut me out of the better money. What does he think he's doing? Well, that prissy, overpaid, glorified cat burglar won't get away with it. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. So this boat here is obviously our boat. Because it was a year ago um, when the arrival to uh, the city occurred and uh, when Kadar was killed. I knew they'd have my ship here! Murderers and thieves! Up here is a flash bomb. That one I actually missed back in the day. Didn't know that was there until I played it again now. So we're actually kind of come out um, in the Great Hall area now on the second floor. So this is, uh, if you take the main entrance, one of the last places you'll get to. So we are going to end up How does it go? going a little bit back and forth here. Da, forget it. Let's read this. Brian. One of those damn briefcases from Rathrin's place is locked, locked tight. Jal, that dumb bugger, killed him before he could get the key. Don't know what's in there, so we're going to need something subtle. You still keep that lockpick stored in the tower? We may need it tomorrow. The small one doesn't seem to work. Also, make sure you bring over that new set of whites we got from South Quarter. You know how the bosses like to distinguish themselves and all that. M Macon. Macon, maybe? Gotta stay awake. Can't fall asleep. What do first? Bert got his nose cut off. Falling asleep on guard so I duty. think this is where we're gonna end up going here. What, what was that? There's one patroller on the... Did I get caught there? I'm a little unsure. Nobody comes up here. So this is actually the entrance to um, one of the two main guys. And for that you only need the hairpin lock to open this one. And this is a lock pick we're going to have to do. Even though I don't like picking locks that I don't need to, this one we need to. Alright, so here we have somebody sleeping. There's a blue base with 100, total 360. There are two stacks of silver coins here. A candlestick, and then there is a bottle of wine. I can't remember which one. Not in that one. So down here, then. Bottle of wine worth 50. There's a healing oil in the top one. There's a readable here. Note to Grissom. Grissom, make sure to get that wine mixer to Limes. You know how he whines and cries when his stuff is late. I don't know what Limes is so worried about. It's been nearly a year since we cut off Kadar. We've always come through solid for him since he started using us exclusively. His belly ache can get stale after a while. Anyway, just make sure to drop it off when you do the Rampone Spice Run this week. If that Taft Gilbert doesn't come through with those weapons in the next few days, we'll have to pay him a visit. When I was there last week, he had a huge crate of stuff sitting in his warehouse. Should have been here by now. I've got a feeling he may have found another buyer. What with all the mechanist activity around the city dock lately. Maybe he has made some new friends. I'm sending Jal back to Shalebridge to get that damned showball print. Starwall says there's some kind of commotion over at the crippled Burrick, and the place was crawling with bulldogs last night. Make sure it gets back in one piece. And I don't want you to get liquored up tomorrow, Grissom. On top of everything else, we have a shipment of precious gems coming in, and you should be setting an example to the men. You're my second in command. Act like it. N. Interesting. This is a very interesting readable, I think, because it establishes the timeline, really, of Thief 2X in Sunnyport, um, or Dayport, um, versus the activities in Thief 2 in the city. 
Uh, we're talking about Rampone, obviously. Rampone's docking district or shipping district. Gilver. We're also talking about um, the commotion at the crippled Burrick. So that, in my opinion at least, is the ambush that we just went through, actually. And it's kind of cool that we are playing these missions every other now, because we're sort of getting the timeline or the story from two different vantage points back and forth. And uh, I think that T2X wanted to be uh, canon as much as possible, where they threw in a couple of references, but it didn't want to change anything from the original story. So then Grissom is the second in command, and there's somebody with an N that is probably the first in command then. So we might figure out who that is a little bit later. So that note we cannot drop, that sticks to our inventory, and that checks off the second in command. There's also a book over here. Walking in Circles, Chapter 10. And so Damien said to Ben, You are surely the foulest bastard for having written these accursed things about me. And Benjamin replied, "'Twere not for your selling of my soul to the heathen creatures that crawl from the depths. I would not have written these foul things about thee. And so did the two men became, become friends again, and the cycle of their adventures began anew. That sounds like a very interesting story. Done here. Okay. There is the most difficult guard is down here, in that through that archway. I don't think he can see us when we are up here. He turns this way, but I don't think so. It's a purple, purple gem. Worth 100 total, 569. There's a well, and... What moved over there? Oh, we did see me. There's a water arrow. Next time I go out, I'm going to do a job alone, I tell you. Right now, I can't take this crap anymore. I can't take this junk crap crash. Yeah, he doesn't see us up here, even though we are facing him. Well, he's facing us. So water arrow there. Yep. Well, you want the job done, you call me. That's the guy. Okay, so here is the mission's only secret. Back here there are two pieces of three pieces of loot, two coin pairs and one statue. Drop it back the way it was. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not how it goes. Crap. Um, uh, she, she was a wench and I was. No, that, that's not right. That's not right. Let's see, this is difficult. Is there anything tonight? What's the matter with me? Uh, <clears throat> Come on, come on. Because it's just a matter of him staying that direction long enough for us to get past here. Okay, awesome. First try. Last time I played it took like 15. He would always turn. He only turns those two directions. So he turns east and south. <coughs> we have what we need here, so... <sighs> This is an engine room, there's a moss arrow, and there's a readable. Any worker who sees to the machinery repairs is reminded to wash his hands before retiring for the evening. This, included, uh, this includes machinery down at the docks. We're not barbarians here, and we certainly don't want to get any grime on the merchandise, nor the fine goods stored throughout the hideout. New recruits are encouraged to keep their griping to themselves. Everyone is treated fairly here. The next free trader I catch running ruining our goods due to negligence will have the offending hand removed from his arm. N. And again, that obviously uh, is the guy in charge. Uh, 
The next time I try to pull something, I'm going to do it by myself. Go in here. This is the I dining room. With all these people. And in here, there is a rug worth 150, and that actually hits our loot goal of 750. Okay. Over here is a ap an apple and a cheese. And this, here's a statue, by the way, that we need. 789. And this is a pickable footlocker, I think, with two water arrows. So we do not need that. I honestly didn't know that he could see us when he was facing that direction. What, what is that over there? Did that shot? Next one moved over. <laughs> he is the most difficult guard in the whole mission. <laughs> Something's caught in my throat. <coughs> Something's caught in my throat. <coughs> As long as we get through here, we're good. So this is the kitchen. Uh, here are a couple of spice bags. Two of them, total 869. And there's a, uh, a recipe book here. Gourmet halibut stew feeds 25. Five cups imported seaside caviar. Three halibut fillets. Five chopped carrots. One raw onion. One brain of sturgeon. Two stalks of celery. Four medium potatoes, half a cup tomato juice. Tomato juice again? Didn't I mention that in the last video? I hate tomato juice. Throw ingredients into pot. Add water for broth to personal taste. Boil, serve. Okay. Augustus, I know you came from a wealthy family, but there is to be no more of this eating on the job. I allow you to cook with our precious spices because you make fine food, but this doesn't mean you can use them anytime you please for personal needs. On your own personal hotcakes. You should know better than anyone who, how transitory most of our goods are and how we need to sell any spice we don't use. Take, for instance, your testicles. They will be transitorily attached to your body if I find, you, find out you or any of the other grunts are wasting our commodities. As the leader of this outfit, I allowed you to join up with us because you're supposed to be cooking, not eating. I expect you to take this seriously. Grissom tells me you've burned my last three warnings. N. Wow, this guy means business. Bottle of wine, two loaves of bread, and one cheese. Here's a readable. No, not a readable, a conversation. So we are going to start walking as soon as that conversation starts. So that is one that we normally would have triggered earlier, right at the beginning of the mission, but we haven't done that. Let's listen to it while... Sometimes I worry that Faradoc is going to get us busted. I can't believe he kept that Fontaine piece for himself. I almost lost my legs stealing that thing. Yeah, it's one thing to actually lose there she is. and disappoint her. I didn't think I would get caught there. Sometimes I worry that Faradoc is going to get us busted. 
I can't believe he kept that Fontaine piece for himself. I almost lost my legs doing that thing. Yeah, it's one thing to actually lose a piece and disappoint the customer, but Reuben isn't one to mess with. I wouldn't care what he does, except that he turns around and puts the pieces back on the market after he's tired of them. Well, Reuben's no dummy, I can tell you that. If that Fontaine shows up in a museum, he'll hear about it. And then he's going to send his ruffians breathing down our necks over here. Ha! Huh. I'm not waiting that long. Davidson's been swimming in money ever since he hooked up with that spice supplier in Black Besides, I don't want to be around when the Hammers finally figure out that Faradox operating right under their noses. That guy's got more gall than a burrick on a full stomach. It's interesting. So we actually went all the way around got the map on the wall, as you could see, during their conversation. We enter this door, which is into the barracks area. This door you can't normally open for Supreme because one of the guys in that conversation actually uh, stations himself pretty close to this door so he can hear it. But once we enter from um, this direction during their conversation, we can avoid that. There is another entry into this into this uh, room, so it's not an issue. But uh, let's go ahead and look at our map then. So. What's a little bit weird is that it doesn't mark that we've been to the areas that we already have been to because you have to actually have the map in your possession for the game to check off those areas. So, um, this is where we started our, our uh, starting cave. We had the cave with the waterfall, we had the main entrance cave and the dock area. This is the only other map. There's actually two maps of this kind. I'm not sure if they were meant to have a different map too, but... Um, anyway, we entered, um, let's see, where did we come in? We came in right here, didn't we? And, um, Grissom's office or bedroom was here. We went down into the dining room and we crossed into the kitchen and uh, we went down the main hall and around this way and now entered the back room of the, there's a little study just south of the barracks. So that's where we're at right now. So we obviously checked off the map objective as well. So readable. Second quarter requisition receipt log. Two dozen Lost City Scrolls. Grimsworth and DePerrin. Kareth Din Wine Mixer. Curator Frederick Limes. One case assorted weapons. Lance Kilger as yet not received from Gilbert Exports. Ivory Carving. Gadam's Curious. Uh, woodwork precursor, precursor mask replica, Lord Gervasius, 40 pound of spice, J and N Rampone, uh, 8 Adonisio crystals, Friend Capetza, so that's Sid Capetza from Shipping and Receiving, Mizara painting, Lord Porter, Showball print, Lord Porter, still looking. So here we have a lot of people from Shipping and Receiving mentioned. Um, we have, of course, Kilgore, which was the um, the weapons manufacturer, wasn't it? Sid Capetza was the inventor. And um, we obviously have Gervasius here, um, who was the one who offered us the extra money for the masks in the Lost City, that optional request in the beginning of the mission. A lot of nice uh, tie-ins to those missions without sort of uh, overstepping their boundaries here. Now, you also might have heard in that conversation, though it got a little bit cut off, that one of the smugglers apparently had worked for Davidson, the um, the thief that was involved in smuggling and piracy uh, in shipping and receiving. So um, he has been recruited from Davidson's ship um, to the smugglers, or to the free traders. Okay, there's quite a few things in here. Let's check a few things. Let's see, so there should be a sharp tooth lock pick here, so that we're gonna need. Here's the rope arrow, if 
you need that, there's also a flash bomb here. So a goblet that we're going to take, total line 49. And this is the briefcase that was talked about. That has a mask. Worth 50, total 9.99. There's also a few other things here, let's see. This is pickable, I don't think we need to pick that. Yes, we do. It has loot in it, I think. Yep, stack of gold coins, total 1024, and then there is a statue back here. Total 1039. And here's a journal, and that we are going to need to read. 2-1. Damn hearty new year it was here. Half the boys passed out celebrating the fact uh, we're over 20 strong now. Been a right profitable year too. Ha! More men means less money for each of us. I prefer the old days when it was just a few guys. Damn surprising the hammers haven't caught on yet. We own this town. If it weren't for us, the whole damn place would be would, would close down. 17-1. Just delivered a beautiful Mizara painting to Limes over at the museum in the city today. Old booger acts all nervous around me lately. I hope somebody didn't open their yapper to him about the incident with that Kadar guy last night, last year. It's just business, but these uppity white-collar guys get real funny when things get a bit violent. I'm going to keep acting like nothing's wrong and hope he just had gas from lunch. 22-1. <coughs> I don't care what Neeson says. I'm keeping the G Gavin statue for myself. If our so-called leader can borrow acquisitions from the vault and lie to clients about it, I can damn well do the same. I've been collecting ga Gavin since I worked for Davidson, and I'll never forgive myself if I let this piece go. Even as I write this, the boss is out with the harlots at Valaris, smoozing with the sheriff, and Grissom is here sleeping off a hangover again. Uh, I should just go back to Davidson. So that checks off this objective as well, that we have found uh, who the main guy is, and that's uh, Neeson. Alex, how do you like the free traders so far? They're a tough bunch of lads, but I'm sure you'll fit in just fine. Glad you decided to come and join us. Ma and Pa would still have you fetching ale for those hypocritical hammers right now. It's not in every organization you get to learn to fight for yourself and travel about at the same time. Sure, hauling barrels up from the docks is tough, but everyone has to put in their share of sweat. Keep it up and you'll be out with me in the fresh air guarding the shop in Sunnyport. Jal. Cool. I, I do like the little... Um, world building from all the readables here. Um, some of which are required to pick up, but some are not. So we are basically done here uh, in this entire section of the map. There really only is the barracks, uh, the kitchen, and the dining room, in addition to the hallways. Uh, so the only place we have yet to go is the Great Hall. There's one piece of loot there, and then Neeson's bedroom or quarters. There's a little gallery there with his bedroom. But we do have to get the purse from the guard that is stationed right outside the back entrance to the barracks now. So what if it's big? And uh, the other smuggler has a counterclockwise uh, patrol pattern around here, so he needs to pass so that he doesn't alert to the door opening. <laughs> we have to wait for him to turn around. What is that over there? What? The turning animation happens a little before the actual body turns around, I think. Oh, I can't stand it. The song's caught in my head. Every time I hear a song I like, it's stuck there for hours and hours, going over Something's and over. Something's moving around. <coughs> 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 down there as well. <coughs> <coughs> Something caught in my throat. <coughs> Something's caught in my throat. <coughs>
feet are killing me. Okay, you didn't my catch me. My feet are killing me. My feet are killing me. Oh, oh. Took his purse. It was worth 15, total 1,054. Now we have to cross the hall again and get past that difficult guard. And from here, we can do this and observe him. And I was a, a better Very man for her. Oh, no. That's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. How's that? What is that over there? How did he see me? What? Oh, I gotta get out of here. Well, I'll I'll tell get some you. sleep. No one would do first. Eat or sleep. See, leaning still can't change your your light gem, even though you're not supposed to. The the dark engine isn't perfect in that regard. Every time I hear a song I like, it's stuck there for hours and hours, going over and over. <coughs> Let's wait for him to pass this time. What are you doing? <coughs> so again, when he turns, it's just a matter of going and him staying. Did that shadow move south long enough. Not sure if it's just my imagination, but I do feel like the guards in T2X have a little bit better peripheral vision my back. than in regular Thief 2 or Thief 1. Did that shadow... Here we go. Good. So we're pretty much home free now. There's um, a couple more things to pick up in here. How does it go? Huh? It's something. How does it go? Oh, he turns around. So we're coming in here now. So the guard that you see, he goes down and then he comes back because there's a drop here down to the stairs. And then he goes into... This is a little weird here. He goes into Neeson's hall, stations himself there, and goes back. He has a pretty long patrol route. Once Just unfortunate that he's right here. Something, something. Um. Do, 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 do. There. Let's see if he's good now. You call me. That's the guy. I'm the guy who's good. And he's none of the guys I've worked with. 
Even the men that I've worked with can hold a candle to my talent. See, there's one piece of loot down there that we want. Gotta stay awake. Can't fall asleep. Bird got his nose cut off. Falling asleep on guard duty. <laughs> Vase worth 100. Total 1154. <laughs> See, I'm not sure. Oh, so somebody saw me. Just an unfortunate patrol route for that guy, because if he's the only one. Let's hide here. He's the only one upstairs here. And he has a long patrol route. If we follow him, it's super easy. out here afterwards. Let's give it a real save here. Oh. Boy, I sure am hungry down here. Ugh. Gotta go up later and catch the scraps from dinner. Mm. I tell you, guard duty is not all it's cracked up to be. Here, there's a gold statue, worth 75, total 1229. That other guard goes over here, stations some here for a little bit. Stock inventory from archaeological dig. Urn, ornate, two. Jar, decorative, small, one. Tapestry, one. Gemstones, glowy, one. Coin, shiny, two. Report all changes to inventory below. Interesting. And here's Neeson's bedroom. Captain Neeson, Federa, uh, Ferida quarters. Keep out under penalty of death. So, Neeson Faradoc. So, when they talked about Faradoc, they were referring to Captain Neeson then. So, that's the same person. So, it seems like there's a little bit of dissension then among the smugglers that are under him. They're thinking that he is too risky and does what he wants just because he's the leader. So, um, now we have to pick the lock on this. And we have to use all three lockpicks to do that. That's why you need to pick up those two extra ones. He's coming in here, but we don't need to worry about him now. So this is Neeson's bedroom then. We have to pick the lock on this also.
And in here you have a stack of silver coins worth 35, total 1264. A couple of things in here. We have a book first. No Passion Among Thieves, Chapter 3. And woefully did the bridesmaid Honey Melon thrust herself heavily, having, heaving into the arms of Dexter, the kind-hearted but misunderstood thief and bandit. Oh, how I shall give up my ways for thee. He did cry, forsaking all the wealth and power his profession forced him to seek. T'was not long after they embraced in that cold steel chamber, lined with the symbolic alabaster of a forgotten age, that they were discovered by Hector, their woe-begotten fiancé from Honey Melon's past. That sounds interesting. Two stacks of gold coins here. Total 1314. And then uh, the final readable. Note to Neeson. Captain Neeson. Kreese says some hammers came snooping around the goodie bag yesterday. I thought hammers had to swear off candy once they converted. Uh, maybe these two have a little secret. He says they snooped around the place a bit real authoritative-like, then ordered a half-pound double mint fudge. Says they kept looking over their shoulders the whole time, real nervous. I almost wonder if they suspect something, but won't report it because they've got a little sweet tooth. Either way, we need to be more careful around there, maybe lay low on daytime activity for a while. The whole incident makes me wonder how much they really know. We can't afford to make them suspicious right now, and we're really pushing things with all of the new recruits we got. The more I think about it, though, the more we need them. Without their watching over things, the nobles wouldn't come to Sunnyport, and without all the fat cats, we'd lose our contracts and our cover. Contacts and our cover. It's a might, um, it's a might right shame we don't have somebody like Truett around here to bring in some real watch guards. They can be brought a whole lot easier than a hammer. I don't know how the hammers keep pulling all their recruits. It wouldn't seem like the builder would have much say in a sin-filled, cold and nasty town like Sunnyport. Guess that huge ominous cathedral they got at the north end is a sign of authority and power in, in and of itself. Whole situation just makes me want to get liquored up. Anyway, you're the boss, so I thought you should know, Grissom. Cool, so then we learned about their cathedral. You cannot drop this. <clears throat> and that checked off, of course, um, if we can find anything more on the hammers. So the cathedral will then be the target for the next mission. Now we just have to leave. Just one more piece of loot. Boy, I sure am hungry down here. Do 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 do. Gonna go up later and catch the scraps from dinner. Do 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 do. I tell you, guard duty's not all it's cracked up to be. But that's pretty much it. Good, let's see. The map, the journal, the two notes to the uh, um, leader and his sidekick. We can't return, neither can we the lockpicks. We got 13, 14. There's one more piece of loot outside. That's it. get spotted from this guy and we got to get his purse that's worth 80 and that is the final piece of loot Let's see if we can do that over here
I think we got a mantle over here. We can't mantle up the slick snow, which makes sense. We gotta wait for him to come back. He's actually pretty difficult to sneak up on because the wood he can hear when we walk fast. And it's lit up by the entrances. Nice looking mission this. Uh, like I've said before, unfortunately it's a little bit too small. A little bit too easy just because there's not a lot of patrollers inside. There, boom, boom. 1394 is all the loot. So that should be good. Now we just gotta sneak by this guy. And leave the leave the mission. End the mission. I said, I think peripheral vision is better. On these guards, I'm not sure, but that's my feeling. Nice. So that was a successful Perfect Supreme run of the redistribution game. 26 minutes, 43 seconds, 1394 out of 1394, two out of two pockets. Um, that was two pieces of loot, two purses. Five locks picked, all those were required. No backstabs, no knockups, no damage dealt taken, no healing taken, nobody killed, no iron beast destroyed or disabled. And then we found the one secret because it has, had loot. Nice, okay, then, um, I will see you guys back for eavesdropping next, back to Thief 2. So we're going to alternate a little bit back and forth. I know that there are two more missions in Thief 2 than there are in in T2X. So we might be one ahead in Thief 2 to, to end on the same mission. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I, I really like this mission. Nice looking. Uh, small, short. Most of the missions in this campaign are on the, on the smaller side, maybe. But there are a couple of bigger ones coming up and not too long. So um, hopefully we'll, you're looking forward to that. I really enjoy this campaign. Enjoy replaying it. And um, enjoy showing it off for you guys. So with that, we're going to say goodnight. So until next time, bye-bye.